What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video and today it's the team selection series. So I'm going through what my team's looking like for game week six, any transfers that I'm thinking of doing, players I'm looking to take out and captaincy, the usual stuff, and also how I got on in game week five, which wasn't a great week for a lot of us uh, and myself is including that. If you enjoy this content, make sure to give it a like as always, much appreciated. Subscribe if you're new around here and hit that notification bell, otherwise I will jump into it. So we'll start off as always by looking at the previous game week, which was game week five, and it was... Um, Awful. No, uh, nothing more to say about it than that. It was the worst game we've had so far this season. Obviously, we're only part through the season. So hopefully, there's much more highs to come, as well as a few lows, I'm sure. But this was this was particularly bad. Um, the reason my overall rank has got an asterisk next to it, um, 511,672, is because the game is not quite over at the time of recording this. West Ham and Villa are playing this evening. So my rank will drop further because I've got no points to come off the bench. Uh, and no more players to play either. So it will drop down a bit. So my overall points will obviously stay the same, 294. Uh, I don't think there'd probably be too many players in the West Ham Villa game that could affect this rank hugely. Um, so I'd expect to stay in kind of the top 550k or so. Uh, but yeah, it's been a poor week. Um, it's the second time I've played a full five at the back and the second time it's gone really wrong. Robertson finally came in with an assist, but didn't get the clean sheet against Newcastle, unfortunately, because of that great goal um, that Willem scored, who I did say on stream that I'd never heard of, and then he goes and scores a goal. So the double Liverpool defence, again, doing really poorly. I thought that was pretty much a guaranteed clean sheet. Didn't happen. Lucas Dinier conceding against Bournemouth, three goals, and getting a yellow card. Coming in with a big fat zero. Zinchenko only won, losing to Norwich. And we have to talk about Norwich. Probably should have been the first thing I talked about. I benched Puki. I made a mistake. I'm sorry to everyone that I apparently forced to do the same. But remember, it is your team. You can make a different decision to what I make. Um, and I kind of went through last week why I was doing it. And I went ahead with that. I didn't think Norwich would win. I didn't think he'd score more than one goal, which he didn't. The problem was I expected City to score so many that Puki wouldn't be able to get bonus. Instead, he got bonus and an assist and came away with 12 points. So probably one of the worst decisions I've ever made in FPL. And if you've watched my videos for a while, I always say always play the attacker and always play with bench follower options that you just bench every week. And if they come off the bench and do well for you, great. But leave that decision out of your hands. Just put them on the bench every time. So that's what I need to go back to doing. So from now on, I'll always play Pookie. Lundstrom will be my bench fodder uh, unless I'm in dire straits and need to play him. He'll be on my bench every single week from now on. Um, and yeah, look, mistake made. We rectify it. We go forward. Hopefully, come the end of the season, those 12 points that Pookie got is not the kind of difference between a really good rank and a poor one. But we'll see what happens. Um, and then, yeah, De Bruyne got benched. I mean, we all know that can happen to Man City players. And it is unfortunate against Norwich, which we thought would be a good um, result. And obviously, a lot of people bought him in. Mount absolutely smashing it with nine points. Right at the death, he scored his goal. Obviously, Tammy Abraham did really well in that Chelsea game as well. More points for Salah. I think he's only blanked once now in five game weeks, whereas Sterling blanked again two weeks in a row. Watford at home next. We'll have to see... Um, whether we captain him again. And actually, Barnes, unfortunately, two points. Um, nothing at his game. But he's got Norwich at home next week, which I would usually say was a good fixture until they defended super well against Man City. Um, but ultimately, in that game, Man City did have the most shots, I think, out of all teams this game week. And Norwich had the fewest. So it kind of went to plan in underlying stats-wise, uh, but obviously not with a result. And Stones and Otamendi is now maybe a bit of a concern. So let's look at how the team's looking going forward. So we'll start off, as always, with defenders and goalkeepers. Going into game week six, two free transfers. Obviously, didn't make one last week. I'd already bought Barnes in against Liverpool. 102 million squad value, which is pretty decent considering I've not wildcarded, but nothing in the bank, which is proving a bit of an annoyance when it comes to transfers. Transfers, um, which I'll talk about soon. Nick Pope, as always, say every week, won't talk about too much. Usually that's a good fixture, Norwich at home, you'd think. But the way Pookie, Buendia and Cantwell have been attacking-wise, it is a bit of a worry about whether he'll keep that clean sheet, but obviously not a worry enough that I want to use a transfer on him. And hopefully, if uh, at the bare minimum, he can get some save points. So he stays. In defence as a whole... Um, I've got a little bit of a problem because I don't really know where to move to. And obviously, bigger the back hasn't really been working. Do I think that Liverpool defenders will be awful for the whole season? Probably not. Um, but it seems that they've had good fixtures and not kept enough clean sheets. And now they're going into worse fixtures. Maybe now is the time to look to offload. I've been saying for a few weeks now, I've been looking at coming off too. Um, Zinchenko is a bit of a worry. There was an um, image on Sky before the Villa-West Ham game that I saw on Twitter. 
Uh, I think it was Ottomendi and Stones together have played 25 games and they conceded 28 goals. And when you look at the partnerships with Laporte and company with various defenders, the amount of goals they concede is much less. So that is a bit of a worry. Obviously, Laporte's out for a while. We might see Pep um, try uh, Fernandini or something like that in the centre-back position. Maybe that will help. I think Wisinchenko was still okay. I don't think Mendy was even on the bench at the weekend. So you'd imagine he'd get a few minutes off the bench before they run him straight into the first team. So again, I'm not worrying too much about him, but I am worried about the amount of points he'll get. Lucas Dinier, I think he's done enough to stay on the team for now. A couple of assists and a couple of clean sheets in the opening games. And Sheffield United at home is a pretty decent fixture. Um, I'd hope for, obviously, a clean sheet there, maybe an attack and return as well. So the main problem I have is where do you go with defence? I've looked at Spurs, Aurier, 4.9 million, two assists at the weekend. How long does he keep his place for? Foyt um, and Kyle Walker-Peters might be back soon. So he's a little bit of a worry. Got Man United defence, which I think have actually been pretty good. They defended quite well against Leicester. Um, but the fixtures aren't great coming up. Chelsea are not keeping clean sheets, even though the fixtures are good soon. Emerson's obviously injured now. Rudiger came back. They didn't concede. Then he went off and they conceded twice. Um, so that's a little bit of a worry as well. Burnley have got good fixtures, but I've got that covered with Pope. Southampton fixtures aren't great. It just goes on and on. There isn't a, a player that I can find, and maybe you can tell me in the comments below, but a defender that I don't own who has a really nice run of fixtures coming up, um, I would want to swap one of these out to. So I am thinking about getting rid of Van Dijk in a minute, um, or this week, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. But I think for now, Robertson, Lucas Dinier, and Zinchenko will probably play. I stick with the kind of big at the back um, in terms of value, but I'm probably going to look to drop down to three eventually and go 3-4-3 three, three, or 3-5-2. Three, so midfielders are quite static at the moment. There's not really anywhere that I desperately want to move to. Um, obviously, De Bruyne got benched. You'd imagine he'd be fine this week. Will Sterling get a rest at some point soon? Possibly. We'll have to keep an eye on how many minutes he plays in Europe and uh, the same for all the rest of the players as well. So I think those two obviously have to stay. And Watford, um, as good as they've been or how okay they've been this season so far in terms of underlying stats, not necessarily the points they've got, I think at home uh, for Man City is a pretty good fixture against Watford. So obviously going to keep them. And I'm looking to captain Sterling again this week. Now Salah is an interesting one because he's only blanked once, like I said. And he's playing Chelsea, who are conceding goals like it's going out of fashion. They're doing really well attacking-wise, of course. Um, but they are conceding a lot of goals. Even when they scored five against Wolves, they conceded two. Um, they conceded two against Norwich when they scored three. So definitely good in attack, maybe not so good in defence. So Salah is definitely a consideration. But I think most of the people that have done well on Capsi so far between those two have picked the home player. Um, obviously, Salah played against Newcastle at home last week. A lot of us went for Sterling away. Didn't work out. So I saw enough from Sterling. I thought he was maybe a little bit unlucky not to get in the points. Hit the woodwork. Um, and so two blanks in a row is frustrating. If it comes to three, then maybe you start to rethink him. But uh, I don't see him being out of the points for long. So as long as he starts that match, Watford at home is decent. And Mason Mount, I said that I wasn't expecting too many points against Wolves and Liverpool at home. He's already got points in Wolves now. So even if he doesn't get anything against Liverpool, I'm not going to be too bothered, I don't think. I got him in at 6 million. He's now risen to 6.5 million. So it was a great early transfer. And Chelsea's fixtures are really good after this. So I think when he's got that number 10 slot um, or spot nailed in right behind Tammy Abraham, he's going to be a great pick. And I think even for 6.5, he's still worth bringing in. Obviously, you'd expect Liverpool to defend pretty well in this game and maybe keep a clean sheet. Um, so I wouldn't expect massive returns, but they've seen how good um, Chelsea have been at scoring recently. So I would definitely uh, be looking at getting him in over this week or next week. The only thing I'm looking to do with this midfield potentially is drop down Salah to Mane. And the reason for that is the transfers I want to make. I want to take out Van Dijk and go to a 3-4-3. Three, three. I've got Greenwood on the bench at the moment, which we'll talk about in a sec. Um, but to do that, it only gives me 7 million. So I've already got Barnes, I've already got Pukki. Um, and so really it's Haller who's playing right now. Hopefully he's not getting injured as I'm making this video. Um, and Tammy Abraham who's obviously in really good form. Um, scored loads of goals, good fixtures coming out like I've just spoken about with Mount. Um, and also the injury that he kind of went off with, Lampard's already said it was it was just a little bit of a strain or, or cramp or something like that. So shouldn't be too concerning going forward. Now Chelsea will have Europe to contend with soon, so we'll have to see how many minutes Abraham gets there if he keeps playing in the league. But given this form, why would Lampard bench him? There's all these kids coming through the academy at Chelsea that are doing really well right now. That's who's scoring all the goals. So I just think that's going to continue. So the big question is, can I drop down Salah to Mane? Underlying stats-wise, they're very similar. Um, Salah is doing well. He's on penalties, of course. Salah's kind of the boy that I want to keep all the time. Um, but to get Abraham in, I'd need to make up 0.3 million. To get Haller in, I'd need to make up 0.5 million. Um, and without downloading... Uh, the downgrading, sorry, over Robertson or Zinchenko as well. Salah to Mane might be the option. And given that Liverpool's fixtures are actually quite tricky coming up, they haven't got very many um, really good home fixtures. 
I don't know how often I'd actually be captain in Salah. I'm quite happy to captain Sterling. Maybe if he gets three blanks in a row, I'll rethink that. Uh, but I don't necessarily need to make that transfer this week. So that is something I'm considering. But right now, it feels static and I uh, do like it how it is. So this is how the full squad's looking. Like I said, Barnes and Pookie up front. Um, but and Lundstrom, then Duncan Greenwood on the bench. And like I said, Lundstrom's going to be staying there from now on. Unless I absolutely need to play him. But Sheffield United's fixtures aren't great going forward. So I don't expect that to happen too often. Um, really happy, I guess, with Puki and Barnes. I would like Hallow Abraham, who I've already spoken about. So just to reiterate, the plan would be Van Dyke down to a four million like Rico. He would then become bench fodder. I'd play Robertson, Lucas Dinier, and Zinchenko every week until maybe Zinchenko loses his place. And then taking out Greenwood, um, that basically gives me seven million to spend on a striker. So right now, I don't really like the options below that that I don't already own. Moise Keane got benched again this week, which is a bit of a worry. Calvert-Lewin obviously scored as well. We've got Mopai at um, Brighton, but his fixtures aren't great. DFA's fixtures aren't great either, even though he did pretty well against Arsenal and looked quite lively. Uh, and then you've got Wesley at Villa, who I've not seen the score tonight for Villa West Ham. Maybe he's done really well, but I, I don't think he's someone I'm necessarily going to want to bring in. Um, especially with Arsenal, I think it's a way up next. So I really want Abraham or Haller, and the only way to do that is find an extra kind of 0.3 to 0.5 million. Uh, if I wanted Abraham, I could just take out Robertson instead of Van Dijk, but I want a Liverpool fullback. I just think their attacking potential is so good. So it's either Salah downgrade or Zinchenko downgrade, or one of the City midfielders, but I'm just not prepared to do it right now because I want to keep them. So that's kind of my thinking. In terms of which defender I'd bring in, um, if I did maybe want to downgrade Zinchenko as well, um, as Van Dyke, maybe keep him this week and do the transfer next week. I'd maybe look at bringing Aurier in this week for Van Dyke, play him, um, and then the week after maybe do Zinchenko to Rico and then bring in the striker I want. Because the thing about Haller um, and Abraham, yes, Abraham's probably going to rise in price once or twice this week, but he plays Liverpool and Haller plays Man United. So I don't necessarily need to bring them in this week. I could stick with this team for one more week and then make the transfer next time. The problem is I've got two free transfers, so I need to use one this week. So I will probably make a defender downgrade. It probably will be Van Dijk, and it'll probably be to either Rico to have as many funds as possible to do what I need to next week, or maybe just go for Aurier, play him this week, um, and hope he keeps his place at the right back. But I do know that's a bit of a risk, and if he does start to get rotated, then I may have to bring out the wild card if I've got too many other fires to put out. So that's something to consider. But Salah definitely captain for me. I don't see that changing unless he plays another 90 minutes in Europe. But even then, I'd expect him to start in the league, especially when Man City are already um, so many points behind Liverpool. Obviously, a lot of the season to go, but they don't want to get too far behind as the season goes on. So I expect Sterling to play. I was, I think the team's looking good. I don't, I, people have asked me if I'm going to wildcard. How can I wildcard this team? I don't think I'd make too many changes. I'd make sure I had a way to bring in a third striker, but I can almost do that anyway. There's not really any of the players that I want to bring in. Like Sun, yes, looks great, but who do I replace him with out of that team? Can I really go without Salah and Mane for the... Um, Fixtures they got coming up, just because they're that bad, you know they're still going to score goals. I think Puki obviously looks great this year's Jimenez potentially, and Barnes, let's not write him off just yet after a couple of blanks. So I really like the team. I don't see where I'm going to go in defence. Um, I want a third third striker, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I can do that anyway. So people have been asking me if I'm going to wildcard. Absolutely not. I think the team's looking pretty good. It's just a shame the rank's not gone with it. Obviously, I only scored 38 last week. But if I played Puki, that would have been 48. So some of that is a bad decision, um, as well as you know not necessary because i've got a bad team essentially so that's it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you followed on with my transfer thinking uh, hopefully i explained it correctly if you've got any comments about what i've said what you think i should do with this team how bad it looks etc leave a comment below like the video uh, if you enjoyed it much appreciated as always and like i said subscribe if you're new around here plenty more content to come this week the points prediction will be out although a little bit later in the week i basically got a bit hungover on uh, sunday so i didn't stream which i got behind with the video so i've not done that yet but the team selection is out today the points predictor will come and i'll have the preview and another stream on thursday as well so loads of content to come as always um, good luck in game week six hopefully this team does well but i'll talk to you loads before that anyway um, otherwise i'll leave this video there cheers all